Hi everyone, Lowkey Lancer here, and welcome to a new video about the music theory behind your favorite video game music. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see future videos as soon as they're available. And if you notice something interesting about the piece in today's video, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know. Now let's take a look at this music. Final Fantasy VIII breaks the mold from many of the previous titles in the series right from the very beginning. The intro video, instead of showcasing the world and building the plot before we start the game, actually showcases the main conflict from the first part of the game. Without getting too bogged down in the details of the intro video, it does do a good job setting up an explosive and fast-paced setting for the game. However, unlike many of the previous titles in the series, instead of continuing into action, the intro video fades away, leaving nothing but the sounds of birds chirping in the background. At this point after the introduction, many of the other Final Fantasy games throw you straight into the action. Final Fantasy VIII approaches things a little bit differently though, and calms things down for you to meet the first characters. Interestingly enough, there is no music here. The main character, Squall, is just waking up after being injured during training. We know that then, at the very least, the final part of the intro showing the fight between the two male characters was real and just happened. We find out a few more things at this point. The character that Squall was fighting is named Cypher, and they are both students. Now that he is awake, Squall's instructor, Quistus, is called into the infirmary to take her student back to class. The game continues to play no music here until Squall and Quistus reach the end of the hallway connecting the infirmary to the rest of the garden. A cutscene begins, the camera zooms out, and the theme for the garden plays for the very first time. I find the music for Balam Garden very interesting. First, it's not very long. It's only a 35 measure piece that lasts for about a minute and 40 seconds before it repeats ad infinitum. Despite the piece's brief length, it has three pretty distinct sections, all marked by a modulation to a new key and a new melody. I find these sections most interesting to look at in reverse, so that's what we're going to do. If you've played many other Final Fantasy games, you know that one of the main themes present through them is the theme of friendship. Final Fantasy VIII is no exception to this, and even though we're not aware of it from the beginning, the theme of friendship is present in the music for Balam Garden. The final eight measures of the Balam Garden theme makes up the third section of the piece, and despite being the shortest section in the piece, because of the importance of the theme that it represents, it is probably one of the most memorable sections from the music of Balam Garden. The leitmotif of the friendship theme is pretty simple. It's a four measure phrase with the same two measure rhythm repeated twice. In the case of the Balam Garden theme, it has a pretty simple harmonic structure as well. It simply alternates between a one chord and a four chord 
for the entire eight measure duration. The four chord is even in second inversion, creating a pedal 6-4 effect to move through the section smoothly. So while this theme is not that interesting harmonically or melodically, it does come back the clearest throughout multiple other pieces of music in Final Fantasy VIII. The first time that we hear the friendship light motif outside of the Balam Garden theme is actually during another piece inside Balam Garden. After the dance where Squall first meets Rhinoa, Quistus asks Squall to accompany her into the training grounds to the secret area. I think at this point that it's important to note that we have already met more characters that will be important to this game's plot. However, Squall is still very much a loner and doesn't really want much to do with them. This includes Quistus, who has been his instructor for at least the last year. Once Squall and Quistus reach the secret area of the training center, we get different music that includes the friendship leitmotif. While this new piece of music, called Tell Me, does complete at least one phrase of the friendship leitmotif, I think it's more important to note that it spends most of its time only playing a part of one measure of the overall friendship motif. I think overall that paints a really good picture of where Squall is at emotionally as a character. While he will of course end up with a lot of good friends, even a longtime instructor doesn't have that privilege with him yet. The next time this theme shows up is in the track Ami, which is the game's definitive friendship theme. The word Ami is even French for friend. This theme first plays in Fisherman's Horizon when Squall and his team beat the Ironclad, a boss seen previously in the missile base. After your party wins, Selfie and her team climb out of the Ironclad and the theme immediately plays. We even get a small text box detailing Squall's relief at his friend's safety, showing us that maybe he's not as cold-hearted as he appeared in the beginning of the game. We hear Ami several more times throughout the game when moments depicting friendship are shown. The last piece containing the friendship theme from Balam Garden is Where I Belong, which you hear when you reach Trabia Garden. I think the most interesting part about the friendship theme playing here is that it signifies that it's not specific to Squall's friend group, but more of a generalized friendship theme, and the garden helps nurture those relationships between its students. While we do hear it the most in relation to Squall and the other students we meet through Balam Garden, it's nice to know that there is a broader world being represented in the game. On to the second section of Balam Garden. This is comprised of the middle 17 measures of the piece and is marked by a clear key change to D major. These 17 measures are broken into two 8 measure sections with a single measure bridge in between them. The main differences between these are the first section having an upward moving 8th note melody and the second section having a downward 8th note to half note melody. I think this middle section is actually the motif that represents Balam Garden as an institution. Zooming in on the first section of this segment, we see that there is a fairly simple chord pattern of 1-5-1-5. One, five, one, five. I think the most interesting part of this is that even though we got a very clear shift to D major with a really solid D major chord at the beginning of the section, the five chords in this first segment are actually minor fives instead of the major fives that you would expect. Do these minor five chords potentially call back to the first section of the piece? We don't really get an answer. The second section of this segment also does something harmonically interesting. It sits on a four chord for a while, switching from a major four to a minor four before ultimately resolving back to a D major chord. But it doesn't end there. It moves to a major seven another strange chord for the key of D major, before moving to the third and final segment of the Balam Garden theme. So, despite moving to a major chord from the beginning of the piece, it doesn't like to stay there. The reason I think this lines up with Balam Garden as an institution is because even though we don't know it initially, there are a lot of strange things happening there. First, it's a literal training ground for teenage mercenaries. Second, there are strange, shrouded garden faculty that literally block your access to particular parts of the garden during your time there. 
Later on, we see more strange things, like the discovery of Norg as the hidden benefactor of the garden, who controls some things from the shadows, and even the fact of Sid creating the garden with Adea in order to create an anti-sorceress army because of a premonition she had earlier. This could explain this section's refusal to fully accept a happy major key in the initial segment, and even the flipping of the major four to the minor four in the second segment. This is also characteristic of a held major second interval on the penultimate measure of the section that creates a lot of dissonance before a very strange non-resolution to a major seven chord that we outlined earlier. While a lot of people have fond memories of their time in Balam Garden, I think the music, particularly this second section, paints a much more suspicious tone for the actions taking place there. Now that we've fully moved in reverse order, let's talk about the first section of the Balam Garden theme. This section is comprised of the first 10 measures of the piece and includes two four-measure phrases with a two-measure bridge to the second section. This section was a little tough to discern harmonically because for the first eight measures, it actually only sits on one chord, an F major seventh chord. In fact, we only get a different chord in the measure right before the second segment starts, and that is an A minor chord in second inversion. So the tough part to tell is does the A minor chord just lead to the D major section that follows it, or is the A minor chord representative of the key in this first section of the piece? I think that it's actually representative of the key of the first section, and therefore for our purposes I will say that this first section occurs in A natural minor. So, assuming that the first section is in A minor, the main chord that we hear throughout it is actually a major 6-7th, which just continues to paint the strange picture that we got from the second section analysis. One thing that the simple harmonic structure allows us to focus on, though, is the melody, and I think that the main melodic structure to focus on is the three downward moving quarter notes that's present throughout the first section. I believe that this melody is actually a leitmotif fragment from the piece Find Your Way, which we hear as a dungeon theme typically when guardian forces are involved. We hear the piece Find Your Way for the first time very shortly after we hear Balam Garden's theme, when we make our way to the fire cavern in order to complete our prerequisite for the seed exam. Interestingly enough, if free, the guardian force that you get from the fire cavern is actually the only other required guardian force for you to obtain in the game. However, this theme shows up again in the Tomb of the Unknown King, which is related to the Guardian Force Brothers, and in the Central Ruins, whose main purpose is to get you the Guardian Force Odin. So more specifically, I think that this downward moving quarter note melody is actually representative of Guardian Forces. I think this ties into the Garden, because Balam Garden is actually the only Garden authorized to use Guardian Forces, and it's likely the main strategy that Sid and Adea worked out in order for the seeds to actually fight the sorceress. I think this relationship is made even more clear when you look at the melody for Find Your Way, which simply expands on this downward melody with more frequent 16th notes, but keeping the same 4-bar phrasing as this melody in Balam Garden. A somewhat less explored plot point in Final Fantasy VIII is the fact that the use of Guardian Forces causes memory loss, Balam Garden strongly advises its students to ignore any criticism of the use of Guardian Forces that they hear, but is this theme simply truncated to accentuate this idea of memory loss? And is this just seen as a necessary side effect in order to win the fight against the sorceress? To wrap all this up, I think that the music for Balam Garden paints a very interesting picture for Final Fantasy VIII as a whole, and right from the very beginning. While many people seem to have very fond memories of this place, I think diving deeper into the music paints a more interesting picture, that everything is not quite as it seems. There are many dissonances, both subtle and strong, and several unresolved harmonies that bring up a lot of questions. And while we don't get many direct answers to these questions, one thing rises above all of that. The friendships that Squall and the others form with each other as students in the garden is stronger than the actions of the garden leadership. 
and that friendship carries the team through many of their struggles later in the game. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can see future videos when they get uploaded. And don't forget to follow on Twitch and Twitter at Lancer. Until next time, enjoy your games and the music that goes with them.